Happy Monday and welcome back to a Monday market update. I'm Caitlin McKegg, a real estate broker here in Phoenix. I am excited to be back, you guys, and start talking about what's going on in the economy and the Phoenix housing market. If you are new here, um, I have been on maternity leave for the last uh, 13 or so weeks. Um, had a wonderful, beautiful baby boy in April and um, have been spending time with family since then. But you know I've been keeping up with what's going on in the market and the economy. So I'm here to update you guys today and let's talk through everything. Uh, side note, if you do want to see a picture of the baby, you can check out my Instagram at uh, your Phoenix real estate agent. I've got all my uh, personal stuff that I share there too, and you're welcome to follow me. So Let's dive in without further ado. Um, market weakness, you guys, we're gonna talk about that today. What's going on, not only in Phoenix real estate, but of course the economy. So let's start with the broader economy and what's happening there. It's a big week this week. We are uh, starting with some um, CPI uh, data coming out this week on Wednesday, I believe, and then PPI comes out on Thursday. Then we're also going to get consumer sentiment index on Friday. So a big week in terms of economic news. So we got to keep our eye on all of that because of course what happens in the economy then affects the housing market. Um, so that's what we have to look forward to this week. I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on with the Fed. This is some inside information. According to MarketWatch, some Fed officials pushed for June rate hike, the minutes show. So this talks a little bit about um, while the Fed officials noted that the labor market remains very tight, momentum in the economy had been stronger than anticipated. There were few clear signs that inflation was on a path back to the Fed's 2% target. So what does that mean? That means they're going to continue to hike the interest rate or the federal funds rate. Um, in the end, the vote to hold the interest rate steady at the range of 5 to 5.25 was unanimous. Um, minutes show many officials wanted to slow the speed of rate hikes to give officials more time to observe the effect of past hikes. And that's something that a lot of people feel is important, and the Fed hasn't really been doing that. Um, officials said that the dot plot would help clarify their views. Um, so we're going to hear more about this in about two weeks um, is the next FOMC meeting. Um, but that's just coming off of the last Fed meeting, what those minutes showed, and some reaction to uh, the economy. And speaking of the economy, the latest news is the jobs report from June. So um, this report came out. Um, and this uh, talks about the economy added 209,000 jobs, extending a streak of gains. Um, so this is um, actually a little bit stronger than anticipated. Unemployment rate was 3.6% compared to 3.7% in May. It was the 30th consecutive month of gains in American payrolls, but the June figure represented a continued cooling of the labor market. The total was down from a revised 306,000 in May and was the lowest since the streak began. Uh, so with the jobs report, um, you know, uh, there was a piece in here I wanted to share. Uh, the report probably doesn't change much for the Fed. So not surprising. This uh, talks about how the June data is the last payrolls report that officials will receive before the bank's July 25th and 26th meeting. It underscored many of the labor market themes that have been present for months. Although the jobs growth is gradually slowing, wage growth remains abnormally quick, and unemployment rate is very low at 3.6%. So this is one of the things that the Fed is really looking at and trying to determine what needs to be done with the uh, federal funds rate. And if the labor market is remaining strong, they're not going to be very interested in cutting rates. Absolutely not, let alone uh, slowing the pace. So It'll be important to keep an eye on the next jobs report and how that changes. Um, but in June, this is what we had. So with all of that news, I found this article interesting. Economist sees a potential rally in the housing market. Now, this goes on to talk about new home sales specifically, saying that new home sales are surging, new construction is on the upswing, and home prices are bouncing back. Um, it appears that after about a year of some slowdown in general in housing activity and disinflation and home prices, that we're now seeing a floor and then a potential rally. Um, so they're talking about new homes sold in the U.S. and basically that our resale inventory is so tight that the uh, home buyers are looking 
to new homes. Even if that wasn't their first choice, that is the option that they're going for because they want to find a home and new construction is where it's at at this point. So I found that interesting. Of course, this is on a national level. Um, you know, I don't know if we're going to see a rally in the housing market because of this. However, it's, it's interesting to watch. So I decided to see what do we have going on in Phoenix, of course, as it relates to new construction. And here's where we're at for new home sales year to date. Um, we're at 9,400 and this is comparing every year. So in 2022, we were at, uh, 9,200 at this time. Um, in 2021, we were at 9,700, not surprising. And then 2020, 9,100, both of these years, we know the demand was off the charts. So that's not the best comparison, although of course things have changed in Phoenix since 2019. But if we look back at 2019, about 8,000 uh, is where we were at year to date. And today we're at 9,400. So it's a pretty big difference. It also is more than last year, um, year to date. And so I don't know. I, I don't see a rally as they call it, but I do think that new home sales will continue to remain strong, especially with our constrained supply here in Phoenix. But that'll be something to watch. So um, let's talk about mortgage rates. That is a big hurdle for many home buyers. And last time I did my market update, I think I want to say we were kind of on the edge of talking about like rates were going to come down in the summer. A lot of people were were assuming that because the CPI data would come out to show that, um, you know, improvement in inflation, et cetera. But here we are. If you haven't been paying attention, which I'm sure all of you guys have been, not much relief for mortgage rates after the jobs report. So not only was Friday's jobs report not helpful to mortgage rates, but they were already pretty volatile and kind of staying in that six to 7% range. Um, so this says, until a few weeks ago, it looked like we might have seen the last of 7% mortgage rates, but the last two weeks have been brutal. The culprit has been a collection of several scheduled economic reports that were stronger than economists expected. Generally speaking, strong economic data puts upward pressure on rates. So that's just something to remember as you're um, gathering information about what goes on in the economy, just listening to the news, reading articles, whatever it is that you do. If there is strong economic data happening uh, or economic reports, um, and strengthen the economy, more than likely rates are going to go up. Um, generally speaking, uh, is what this is saying. So that's where we're at as far as mortgage rates. So home buyers, I'm sorry, that's um, not the best news for you. And sellers, not the best news for you either, because um, it cuts out a lot of home buyers out there. Um, it, it makes uh, your mortgage unaffordable, especially when prices are at where they're at. Um, not for everyone unaffordable, but um, you know, many people struggle with rates that high. So let's talk about Phoenix. What is going on? What is the weakness? We're going to start with the CMI because as you remember, CMI is something I love to talk about every week. This is the Cromford Market Index. I'm a subscriber to the Cromford Report, so um, sharing from my subscription. And basically the market index, any reading over 110 is a seller's market, any reading under 90 is a buyer's market. We're at 163.1. This is for Phoenix Metro as a whole. Um, so technically we are in a seller's market. Now this pales in comparison to um, when we were in the seller's market, as people remember, with 20 plus offers on a house and homes going 50,000 over the asking price, this number was up in the 400s. So very different kind of seller's market that we're in now. Our demand is lower. So we're about 20% uh, below normal for demand with 100 being normal. Um, and our supply is very low, um, about 50% below normal, 50.5%. Um, 50, 50 um, and so this, as it was um, you know, earlier this year, this is really our biggest constraint um, and hurdle is that we don't have enough homes for sale because our demand is outpacing our supply. Um, and so that's what's pushing us into the seller's market. But let's look by city. And I know you all love this chart. Um, we actually have um, 
eight cities that are showing improvement for sellers, um, but nine are showing deterioration. So these green arrows, to refresh your memory, are um, cities where we saw improvement for sellers month over month. Um, when we look at the CMI for that city this month compared to last month. And then the red arrows mean we've seen deterioration for sellers. So therefore, better conditions for buyers. Now, um, looking at all of these, um, they're pretty much all sellers markets except for Buckeye, which is technically balanced at 102, but anything over 110, remember, is a seller's market. Um, but this is definitely showing some weakness. If we look at the overall average uh, change in these cities over the last month, it is negative 1.5%. This is the first negative monthly movement since December of 2022. So this whole year, we've been seeing improvement for every city when we take the average, and now we're starting to see uh, some weakness there. And we're seeing a mix of this green and red, and it's been a bit since we've seen that. Um, we got into a place where we were seeing a lot of green arrows on pretty much every city. So um, there is a wide range, though, between the cities improving most for sellers. Um, Buckeye, Chandler, and Paradise Valley are all up 11% from the previous month, and and those improving for buyers are Cave Creek, Glendale, and Tempe. Um, all of those improving significantly in favor for buyers. Um, so that's why they have those those red arrows there. So, um, you know, summer is always a slower time for us. Um, demand has dropped um, between June and July. And typically um, seeing the third quarter readings are pretty slow because our summers are slow. So um, it's never really the strongest part of our year. Um, so there's not really much reason to expect a change over the next three months, according to the Cromford report. Um, new listings remain very weak, uh, down 40% from this time last year. But if you remember last year at this time, we had a surge of new listings. So I'm not surprised to hear that. Um, but uh, that is likely to keep things kind of slow. We just have lower transaction volume because there's not a lot to buy. And then we've got interest rates that are high, which discourages buying buyers to purchase. And we've got a lot of people with low interest rates that don't want to leave their home and take on a mortgage that is higher unless they really have a motivating reason to do so. So um, that is where we're at today, you guys. That is my update on what's going on in the economy and the Phoenix real estate market. It's going to be interesting to see because we are definitely seeing some weakness creeping in, whether it's a summer slowdown and we see a pickup in the fall, or it's an indication of where the market's heading, time will tell. So thanks for joining me, you guys. It is great to be back. I appreciate all your support um, and the comments while I was gone. Um, I am happy to be back on these Monday market updates. And of course, if you have any questions about buying, selling, renting, investing here in Phoenix, make sure to either drop a comment below or reach out to me. My contact information is in the description and the pinned comment below. So thanks guys. I will see you later this week with another video. Have a great week.